Hello everyone and welcome back to Bridge Builders Academy. Many of you have been asking to enter the research field after dentistry or even after completing any medical or healthcare related field of study. We know by now that there is a component of dental research in India which is at an infancy stage. I have already discussed about this field in our previous videos. But do you know that there is a basic sciences research area also that you can explore after completing your studies? In today's video, we are going to explore the field of biomedical science in the US and how you can enter the field. To discuss this, we have with us Dr. Satvik Maredu, a dentist turned into a passionate researcher. Dr. Satvik completed his BDS in 2012 from the Sibir Institute of Dental Sciences. To further advance his interest towards biomedical research, he went to the US and completed his master's degree in 2016 from Rutgers Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. He has also secured a PhD at the same institution and is currently pursuing a postdoctoral fellowship. His area of research and expertise lies in the cardiovascular field and wants to establish himself as an independent researcher back home. Let us understand what this field is all about and what you can expect. This video will be divided into three parts, wherein today, in part one, we are going to understand what the field of biomedical research is all about. So let's hear. Hi, Dr. Satvik. Uh, welcome you on our channel, Bridge Builders Academy, where we basically guide the dental students and practicing dentists or anybody in the healthcare professional regarding various careers in dentistry and healthcare. So welcome you once again on our platform. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor. So how did you develop your interest towards biomedical science after completing your dentistry? Uh, right from the beginning, I'm more uh, inclined towards science uh, rather than like, I do like medical profession, but uh, as India has more of peer pressure where uh, there are only like two major groups, like one is the engineering and other is the healthcare profession. And uh, uh, basically, in uh, during my plus one, plus two, or 11th and 12th grade, I developed more interest towards genetics. I was really fascinated with Mendelian genetics by the professor who taught me. And I felt like, why should I, why should not I do like genetics? But uh, at that point, like lack of proper guidance, knowledge, and multiple things, I was not able to like support myself, like why I wanted to do it. But during my, I got a dental admit and everything was a free seat. So, so I had to join in a dental school, but still I do love my dental course because I got a lot of satisfaction during my dental career. I'm good at clinics, but still the internal urge towards research never let me go down. Like I attended almost like uh, 15, 20 conferences during my undergrad. I got the opportunity to do it and there were few uh webinars like where uh, or lectures by the chief guests who literally enlightened me how much percentage of people do research it is even less than 0.05 percent this is way back in 2008 and i don't think the stats were pretty much improved but there is a great change these days i see a lot of people moving on to research and uh, that's one thing and then i came across stem cells during my undergrad life, during pathology and stuff. I thought like, why can't we regenerate too? That was my fa fascinating story uh, I used to have uh, during my fourth year, 2011. After coming over, uh, I actually, my uh, master's was in biomedical sciences with stem cell concentration. So I had great passion towards stem cells at that point, but over the time, got to know like it's more like an application and not like a basic science if you want to develop yourself as a researcher you need more about the basics so that's when i i i like started pursuing but definitely i took few other things also in consideration maybe i'll uh, i'll uh, let you know later like one major reason i feel which i would like to state at this point is as a clinician i have a simple math so maybe if I'm dealing like 10 cases, maybe per month, if I take five days off, it's going to be 250 cases. And for 12 months, maybe somewhere around uh, 3,000 or something. 
I would yeah. say. And if I do some dental camps or something additional 2000 in 10 years, maybe I'll reach max is 50,000. If I do the same amount of work in research, maybe I might not do like not every research gets into a great discovery, but still it plays a small portion in somebody else's step. Like everything is built into for the process of a drug. Like it's not just one person who can build a drug. It it relies on multiple researchers and it usually takes decades of time, not even 10, but it's going to reach a lot of public. Yes, that would uh, that would be one of the biggest reason why I chose. And yeah, I would like to deviate a little bit so that it would be a new way for some others. Correct. I think that way I'm even fulfilling my interest for research. Yeah, right. Correct. And you put it very correctly. Like you know, res researches are generally done to, uh, to basically benefit the entire population. So, uh. Uh, very correctly said like if you really want to reach the masses i think research or any other non-clinical healthcare field will help you to do so correct even the doctor has to use a medication which is being done by a researcher right absolutely and without research not only in this profession in any profession without research medicine itself doesn't exist because what if there is no upgrade for a stethoscope or upgrade for a like echocardiography machine or something else like everything involves research it yeah. may be on the technical aspect where the softwares or the ece people do it or it is a medical device development so there are n number of professions that are but for each and every field yes it is important that for a nation success research is the backbone but yet it is on a downscale yes absolutely. not only in india even in abroad i would say still research is not what it is it okay. is not giving the same importance definitely the same with the public health uh i would say the public health stream like if there were not many public health researchers or the data analysts how would the covid data even be given out with the numbers every day update right there is a ton of behind work yeah definitely i appreciate the help of others uh, like the frontline workers or others, but still there are other professions that needs to be like enlightened. Even uh, there are m multiple myths. Like for example, earlier uh, during COVID, there was uh, a flyer circulating. Oh, uh, we are thanking uh, the doctors, frontline workers, pharmacists, uh, police personnel, government authority, and everything. But where the hell are scientists or researchers? Yes. Not all pharmacists are researchers, but all researchers include some of the pharmacists. Mm -hmm. Just because the, the drug companies are called uh, pharmace uh, pharmaceutical companies, it doesn't mean that only pharmacists work. There are a lot of MSc, MT grads, and a lot of lab technicians. There are a lot of personnel involving, which are like involved in the core research. Okay. Without scientists, do you think the boosters or uh, so called drugs were? gone through no the same with like everything uh it takes uh the only thing is slowly it's getting perceived a little better i would i would ha be happy if it is more correct body. Yeah. yeah right correct so uh could you please guide the audience uh around what the field is all about like what is biomedical science so Biomedical science in general, it's a broad or a vast thing. For example, in dentistry, uh, unless until you step in, you don't know that it has like nine to 10 departments. I think now they are even increasing, I guess, but initially it was around nine or something. Similarly, in biomedical sciences, it depends on multiple categories. Uh, like what is the exact thing you want to, because uh, it is a more diverse stream. My aim initially was to do more on stem cells. So I had to take a lot of coursework on stem cells. The coursework also involves uh, biochemistry on a larger scale, like where you get to know more. Yeah, we did study it in our second year or first year, I guess, biochemistry and physiology, I guess. Yeah, so you learn more about these uh, Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, amino acids and everything during biochemistry. Here it is a little bit more like more on the technical aspect as well, like how you do the things. Not every coursework has uh, the kind of uh, 
uh, lab techniques associated. So it is important to look into what kind of stream or what kind of uh, skill set you wanted to learn. So for example, I had zero experience uh, when I joined masters. So before even, uh, so my undergrad, I completed in 2012. And uh, it took me a couple of years. I had a gap year for two years. So I first thought, am I fit for research? Like, mm -hmm. can I withstand the pressure in research? Can I even do research? Because I'm not, yeah. hardly I think I used was a test tube for Bend Bendix reagent or uh, slight preparations for the physiology blood smears. Other than that, I don't think too much of uh, uh, technical skills we are aware of, like very little, I would say. And even during the intermediate, uh, the plus one, plus two grades, uh, maybe we have done with earthworm dissection or uh, a frog dissection, which was very, very minimal. I felt like, am I, am I worth even trying? Because I'm competing with a bigger group, like where they are MSc grads and others. And with lack of proper knowledge, and I directly applied for a PhD because I had a professional degree. Everything failed. It took me a while to figure that out. During that process, I did volunteer for three months in CCMB. I was able to get it, uh, luckily. And that was the most uh, crucial period where I tested myself. And I had a very good guide at that point. He didn't even actually, uh, I didn't even study under him. He was my HOD's mentor. Uh, Dr. Ranganathan, he's from uh, Raga's Dental. He's my go-to person whenever I am low. So that's when uh, the first thing, I don't know if you are a little aware of uh, a pipette. So I used to aliquot 1 ml milliQ water or deionized water into smaller 1.5 ml tubes. That was the first task I was being given uh, by the research uh, associates in CCMD. Like, because I don't, I never even used a pipette. Or I think many of the students even don't know what a pipette is, even the PGs, I would say, because we never used it. So these were, then I had little bit of encouragement. Then uh, they gave me like uh, two plates of uh, mesenchymal stem cells uh, that were uh, derived from the placenta, I would say. They used to have, that's a stem cell lab. I was lucky in multiple things. And he used to say, okay, he had four dishes. He said, okay, try uh, two dishes and isolate RNA. I said like, okay, uh, that's a big task for me. So let me isolate. I got really good uh, readouts of impurity it was very low. And he realized, oh, you did pretty good. Do the others also. That was like a lot of encouragement for people like me who are beginners. So then I felt little confident. Okay, maybe I can move ahead. So this is one of the important insight I would give. First, test yourself whether you can even, uh, for example, I am like right now uh, in the middle of an ocean trying to survive, but at least I try to know that maybe I don't have the fear of water. I don't say that I know swimming. Swimming is like a big thing for me, but at least I made sure that I don't have fear of water before even diving in. Correct. Okay. 